Dharavi, India's largest slum. One million people squeezed into an area half the size of New York Central Park. Here, some of the poorest people on earth live on one of the most expensive pieces of real estate in the world. It's the sweat of the people of Dharavi which binds them together. It's a bond of working class solidarity. Meet the extraordinary people who call Dharavi home. Mumbai, India. An Asian megacity. Home to the country's economic hub. The Bollywood film industry. And 18 million Indians. In the heart of the city lies India's largest slum, Dharavi. One million people in one square mile of ramshackle buildings and hidden factories. A dirty, rat-infested place with too little water, unreliable power, and open sewers. An eyesore to Mumbai's middle classes and a real estate developer's dream. Many wanted destroyed. If the state had its way, they would have erased this off the map of Mumbai and made something else here. Dharavi was made famous by the Oscar-winning blockbuster movie, Slumdog Millionaire. But its big screen treatment caused an uproar in Mumbai. Particularly, its title. Why dog? I mean, I don't know where that slum dog business came from. How can you even use a term like this? We have lives, we have homes and friends. We are also humans. But the real life place behind the movie is a slum that defies expectations. A vibrant community with its own schools, places of worship, and entrepreneurial enterprises full of people fighting to survive in the most extreme circumstances. A single mom who picks through trash to put her daughter through school. Ordinary lives made extraordinary by the slum they call home. Right in the heart of India's fastest growing city is Dharavi, sandwiched between two railway lines. In little more than 100 years, rural migrants have completely transformed the area. These people have actually filled the swamp and made it what it is. They have worked here in terrible conditions. People worked building a foundation for their houses. And what we see today is the, is the joint toil of the masses of Mumbai city. Houses and workplaces are stacked on top of each other. Thousands of textile and pottery factories and tanneries consume the crowded space and allow the residents to survive. Dharavi's biggest industry is recycling. 80% of Mumbai's trash is processed here. Thousands of workers, the so-called rag pickers, sort through the garbage of Dharavi's dumps and use their ingenuity to turn the city's trash into treasure. It's a filthy and dangerous job. But 
Rag pickers work 10 hours a day and earn just $5. But the recycling industry they work for is worth millions. Workers within the slum grind the plastic, wash it, and sell it to manufacturers as raw material. At each stage, the processed garbage gets a little more valuable. In Dharavi, there is no such word as garbage. There is no such word as uh, things to throw away. Every grade of plastic is segregated in Dharavi. Every piece of paper finds a buyer. Babu and his team rely on the constant flow of garbage created by Mumbai's 18 million inhabitants. Every day they face the hazards of chemical, industrial and human waste. They put their lives at risk sorting through the garbage. In every corner of this one square mile slum, people work hard. Dharavi produces over a million dollars worth of goods every single day. Here, people sleep where they work. Manufacturing everything from food to high street fashion to machine parts. This is like a huge factory of employment generation. Uh, of wealth creation, of a kind which cannot be formalized. Um, unless I can give an alternative, I think this is what is going to work for people. Eighty-five percent of Dharavi's residents have a job. And they work from the moment they wake up to the time they sleep. It's the sweat of the people of Dharavi which binds them together. It's a bond of working class solidarity. So what binds them together is the need to survive in the city and the need to cooperate with each other. One of the most industrious districts in the slum is the Kumba Warda. In the 1930s, a handful of potters moved here and slowly built themselves a better life. Now, it's a successful self con On the surface, Dharavi is a crowded, poverty-stricken slum. But its streets are full of people who have triumphed despite their desperate surroundings. People who came with nothing arrived in Mumbai, slept on the pavement, but have now got garment factories. From where? From nowhere. I mean, they did not get loans from banks, so they had the kind of uh, business acumen and ingenuity and determination to build lives for themselves. Dharavi's industries have made some rich. Here, there are millionaires who definitely aren't slum dogs. There are also people who have made it wealthy, but they continue to live in Dharavi because they want to be near their place of work. Dharavi's economic viability is fueled by individual success stories. By those. Just living in Dharavi is a constant struggle. The roads are failing. Electricity is often intermittent or illegal. And there's only one toilet for every 1,400 residents. Raw human sewage ends up in the local creek. 
and disease is rampant. Most slum dwellers must ration water. Typically, 15 families share one tap that works for just two hours a day. With so little water at a time when there's acute water shortage, these women keep themselves clean, keep their children clean, keep their houses clean. It's only that outside their houses, there's nothing they can do with the muck that is there. Despite the hardships, Dharavi's people have managed not just to survive, but to nurture the community they call their own. Single mom, Lakshmi, works to provide an education for her daughter, Sheetal. At the same time, she continues her volunteer work with the Acorn Foundation, despite opposition from her mother. For months, Lakshmi and the team have been trying to find a permanent building in the middle of the rag picking district for their charity. Today, their hard work pays off. They manage to secure a building. Right now, it doesn't look like much. But Lakshmi and her team plan to transform it into an advice center and workers' cooperative. The profits will be used to educate the children of rag pickers. Lakshmi and her mother didn't have choices. Life was very hard to them. And the next generation will be going to school, and I see great things happening for them. Dharavi has overcome massive obstacles. Over decades, through the hard work and ingenuity of its people, it's developed into a densely packed mini-city. We are on government land. If Dharavi is developed, we will be the first to be removed because we have no proof, nothing. We are poor, we are just eating, sleeping and surviving. But if we had to leave, where would we go? But the issue is complex. This may be a tight-knit community, but it still has serious problems. It's open sewers, dilapidated housing, and failing water supply ultimately make it an unsafe place to live. I don't think any of them want to go on living for generations to come in the kind of conditions they live in. It's, there's no joy in living in a 10 by 15 space with erratic electricity, no running water, and most important, especially for women, no toilets. The challenge is coming up with a redevelopment plan that works for everyone. The government must understand that you need to look at Dharavi as people who are workers and who contribute to this city without which 
the city will come to a grinding halt tomorrow. For now, the bulldozers are on hold. Thanks in no small part to a global economic downturn. The people of the most talked about slum in the world are getting on with the business of what they do best, surviving. On every count, there is really something one can learn uh, from people who have so little and who are given so little. And yet they're all the time devising new ways of surviving and getting ahead. Surrounded by poverty and squalor, Dharavi's people persevere in an extraordinary place built from nothing but their own sweat, ingenuity, and dedication. Someone spent their childhood on this land, and someone spent their old age on this land. If they move from here, their soul won't cope. They will always remember their home, their land.